It sounds like it's going on and off. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. It's on. I decided since we have a short amount of time, I'm going to talk about essentially one concept or one element of painting, and I'm going to talk about balance. And I'm, and I'm going to relate that to dominance. I have a degree in architecture. I've been painting for 20 years. Balance and dominance has always confused me. Let's see. How can I have things balanced, but have some dominance? That never made sense to me. And preparing for this, it finally made sense that essentially balance talks about Oh, it has to do with where I'm standing, apparently. Balance talks about individual items. That is to say, I'm going to balance my warms and my cools. I'm going to balance um, my reds, my blues, and so on. And yet, dominance means that um, when I was critiquing a bunch of my paintings with some students one time, we, I had a whole pile of paintings that I didn't like. And to the painting, as we went through them, we discovered that if we didn't follow the principles of design, they were paintings that we didn't like. You couldn't tell if there was a vertical or horizontal dominance, if there was a straight or curved line dominance, if there was a warm or cool. If we looked at it and said, I, you know, it's not bad, but it's, it's not really good, we would usually find one of those elements lacking. Now, a lot of the paintings that I've been doing lately are, it really doesn't matter how you hold it up, if it's a decent painting, and, I, and I'm not saying that it is, but it should be a pleasant composition regardless of how you hold it up. It's just top color dancing around. And, and so, uh, if you're doing abstracts, or if you're using bright colors, you have to be careful about balancing your colors throughout the composition. And so what I'm going to do is just, just take that step and, and, and relate it also to composition. Here's another thing that I didn't understand. You remember when Frank Webb was here, he talked about something about his whites doing something like this. Do you guys remember that? His whites doing something like this. Um, you all also know the concept of having a center of interest. And I'm, I'm trying to figure out, let's see, center of interest. White's doing, what the, what the heck is he talking about? And essentially, what he was talking about was, at least this is, this is the way I read it, and I'm quite sure about this now. A lot of what Frank Webb paints, because he uses bright splashes of color, appear as abstracts. That is to say, there is color all over. And so, rather than leading you to a very specific center of interest, what he is doing is trying to get the viewer's eye into that painting and keep it inside that painting. Keep the viewer looking at that painting. And so, he, rather than saying, this is where I want you to look, he says, I want you to get into this painting and keep your eye within this painting. And so he's essentially treating it as an abstract, if you will. I'll, I'll use those terms. Uh, Karen Knutson, when she teaches her abstract course, uh, oftentimes will do the crucifix, a way for the eye to move through. So there are a number of different ways of doing it. But essentially, I'm going to do that with this painting tonight. Because I have such a short period of time, I started by doing a quick sketch. Uh, and uh, can you see what the sketch looks like? You can see it's, a, it's, it's much like the one on the left over there. Uh, I, I use that, again, being short of time, I'll use that as an example. And as you can see, I just did an underpainting, essentially setting my palette. And from there, what I'm going to do I've left some whites, and can you see, you can probably notice I've actually used Mr. Magic, or Mr. Clean Magic Eraser, to take some lights out so that I am creating a little bit of this. Can you see that? Very random, very sophomoric. I'm not trying to make this difficult to follow. It's just a very simple pattern. And so when I paint with these colors, by the way, why do I paint with these colors? 
because they're there, because they're available and it's fun. Um, oh, that's okay. I only paid with my left okay? hand anyway. Okay. Um, <laughs> Do you want the chair? Or no? And if I need both hands. Yes. No. If you need both hands, you just. No, I, I'll, I'll do the standing up. Um, as you see, I do I do paintings realistically, this kind of stuff. It's just to have fun and just experimenting, trying to see where this is going. Um, and and I I don't do a lot of planning. I was somewhat skeptical about painting like this because. What can I say? All I'm doing is getting color to dance across the page. Um, I'm just going to start painting and let's see where, where it goes. I, I pick out colors in here. Does it make any sense? We're going to talk about balance now. And here's what I do when I paint. Very simplistic. I have a yellow there. What kind of yellow? That's a yellow. Uh, I'm going to put some yellow here. Do you paint right from the tube? Uh, I've got a little bit of water in here, and I did spray uh, uh, my paper, but essentially, yeah, I do. I do. I like to. Um, I like bright colors, and I find it interesting when people say, "Gosh, I'd like to get brighter paintings. How, I wish I could make mine brighter. How do you do that?" <laughs> and I again get very simplistic and say, "Let's see." We've, we've got pigment and we've got water. Those are the two <laughs> elements we're working I wonder what I should use more of. Pigment, water, pigment. You know, I think I'll take more pigment. And so the answer is, you want a bright yellow, go in and take a bright yellow and put it on. It's a simple, you know, that, that's not a difficult concept. But I'm not that brave. You know, it doesn't take bravery. It takes stupidity more than anything. All, all I'm doing is trying to have fun and experiment with color. And, um, you know, this may go in the garbage tomorrow, but tonight I'm going to have fun doing it and try to learn something from it. So, I, I, I haven't gone too far with my yellows. That's how, how simply balanced. I'll pick the yellow up again later. Um, I, I see that I've put some orange in as underpainting. I'm going to do some orange on the roofs here. Uh, that's always a fun color to do. Are you working and on arches? I'm working on, you know, I actually have some Kilimanjaro here. Uh, it's just 140 pounds. There's nothing special about it. I buy whatever is on sale. How do you like that? Um, I, I've used arches, Windsor Newton, and Kilimanjaro. And I can't tell the difference between them personally. Okay, I'm, I know that I'm going to be doing some orange down here. I don't know why, but I'll put some in just down here. If anybody has any questions, please ask. I have a question. Yeah. What about the thing? Uh, the magic eraser, uh, the woman from... Yep. The North Shore came and she was using that. Joyce Gow. Yep. Yeah. And I'm wondering, does anybody know what those chemicals in that magic eraser does to your paper? I, I don't Over know. Long I don't know the answer to that. Because it's pretty potent if you use it on yeah. your walls or on your floor, and I'm wondering about the paper. Yeah. No, I don't know the answer to that. I've got something that I'd like the whole group and, and Dick, you to hear. One of my students came to class today and she bought 10 sheets of Arches cold press paper, 10 sheets, all wrapped up in shrink wrap just like Arches does it, and it's Arches paper for $5.50. And she, she said, oh, that's got to be a mistake. And they said, no, no, it's on sale then. No, it's not on sale. Joanne Fabrics. That's 10 yes. sheets for $5.50. Let me add something to that. I went over there. Oh, the class you did. Well, I went, uh, I had to make a detour. I was going somewhere else. So I went there to the Woodbury one. They had one package left. Somebody had come in and bought all of it. Oh. oh. And, um, and the package that I got had, the, the package was broken and there was some dirt on one sheet. But I said, this is an incredible price. You're selling one sheet for $6.60. In a package of ten for five fifty, I don't understand. Yeah. And she said, 
Well, it's the last package. Do you want it? <laughs> so then I went to Woodbury, and I also went to one in, um, up in Blaine, and nobody else has them, so I don't know. Oh. Anyway, so it's a freaky thing. Wow. <laughs> okay. Wow. Not kidding. Sorry, Dick. That's okay. That's okay. I'm just painting away. Now, um, let me let me do this, whatever this blue is. You know what kind of blue it is. Cerulean blue. Yeah. And uh, so I throw some in up there. Um, oh, it's running. Uh, I'm going to lay a little bit in over here. I'm going to put some down in here. Just all we're talking about tonight is balance. Um, we can talk about other things. Uh, what we're going to do after tonight, after the meeting, we can make plans. But with respect to this, we're talking about balance. Um, a very simple thing. So, so basically, like doing an abstract, and, it, and again, balance was always a difficult thing for me. It seems so simple, but when you're, when you're talking about uh, a composition, let's say I want to come on down, I want balance. And it wasn't until I started doing the abstract <laughs> that, uh, that all of a sudden I thought, oh, that's fine. If, if I do some here, some here, look at there, the, the blue isn't balanced. I need blue someplace down in here, don't I? Frank, you can see. You're sitting right up front. You should be able to tell me. Now, now how, do I, how do I balance something like that? Well, I can have exact amounts in different spots. I can have a tiny one out here and a big one in here and a small one down here. I can have, uh, to get balance, I can have one that is very <coughs> vibrant or intense and a larger one that isn't as intense. So there are different ways to balance things. And that's part of the, part of the trick of, of getting a nice composition being at least somewhat subtle. Um, you know, you don't have to go overboard. I'm going to pick up another color. Um, you got, got the, yeah, you got that one green color coming down next to the yellow. Now, do you have the? Ah, you noticed that. Uh -huh. I, now I do have an underpainting over here. Uh, I picked up the color on my brush, and I've already forgotten what it is. Uh, let Let's see what it is. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. That's going to take some work, isn't it? Okay. A uh, little ultramarine. Now, I, you notice that I'm saving my, my darks till last. Um, but, but I'll try to take care of this situation right now. Not only is this strong direction, and I may have to break that up, but, it, but it's a very strong color. You know, for right now, how about, if I, how about if I pick up something down here? I know that's way off to the edge, and I may have to soften that, or it might bring too many eyes over to the edge. And I'm going to just be simplistic, that's a little high. And um, I know that I want something out in here. <coughs> I always end up down here, don't I? Oh, I know what I'm going to do. Um, we'll, we'll end up putting something down in here. Okay, there I, but for right now I've got the color down in there just to balance things out. So this, this is how simple the lesson is tonight, the demo is tonight. It's about balance um, with colors. And I'm going to, but I'm using some bright colors so that, so that it's something of a challenge. When, now, I want, I want to show you something with respect to what I just did. I just put a, um, a palm tree in, or whatever you call it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, wrong. You, you know what I'm saying. And um, you can hardly see it. So part of what I'm going to end up doing in this area is some negative painting back behind uh, when I've got the uh, the light colors like that. I'm going to do some of that right now 
again, I'm trying to be aware of the time and the fact that there's just no way in the world that this is going to get done. But let me just give you an idea. I'm going to jump to a couple of darks here, just so that you can see. Now remember, I have one of my white areas here. Uh, I'm going to put some darks here nonetheless. And that is uh, an area where there's a window or a, a patio door, I guess. I'm also going to put some darks here. Is that black? Um, you know, I don't use black. I, I have such bad luck with black. So this is indigo, which is, of course, a, a dark, dark blue. And, and then what I will do to get my darks is I will simply slightly alter that. I'll drop it into one of my reddy colors. Uh, my fuchsia or my alizarin crimson, uh, so that I, I, it turns into a dark, dark red. Uh, that looks pretty consistent there, doesn't it? I'm, I'm just going to put some darks in here, um, come down in here. So I've got some blues and some reds going here. This is a crowd in here. You can't see what's going on over here, but if I have a center of interest, ultimately I'm going to bring you back to this point, where uh, much like this one, <coughs> she's worried about coffee and I'm carrying a load of brush around. <laughs> Week-long leadership training course with Blandy. And during that, they test you to determine your style of leadership and the reason they do it is that we're all different, or, you know, there, there are many different styles, and the way in which you interact with other people is determined by your personality. An example, I, I'll, I'll continue painting and I'll tell you about this if you're really interested. So, they, they mix some of our groups together, and uh, uh, 